Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook, and I'm Raymond Wu. And uh, Ron, I'm going to start off this segment by talking about your personal you know, career development. I understand that before politics, that you were in private business for a long time, for like you said, 40 years. Mm -hmm. then, then the what lines of business were you involved with? And you were successful, I know, in starting a number of enterprises on your own. Can you share with us some of that experience? Sure, I'd be glad to, Raymond. Yeah. I, I'm what you would call a serial entrepreneur. Okay. It, it's kind of a sickness. Yes. You, you go out <laughs> and you take an idea yeah. and you turn it into a business. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and build it up yeah. from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fortunate uh, that uh, my wife was interested in business. I don't know if that was willingly or unwillingly, <laughs> okay. but after I would build the business up, I would turn it over to her, make her president, then okay. let her run it. Okay. And then I would go off and find another idea. That's a perfect idea. combination, yes. Find another idea yes. that I liked. Yes. And so over the years, uh, I built up seven different businesses. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. And uh, uh -huh. each one independent okay uh, and I still even though I tried to retire five years ago yeah. when I got involved in politics yes and uh, my friends called me up and said oh you're you're not doing anything now mm -hmm. you can run for city council that's right so my wife loves it because uh, it gets me out of the house in the morning okay I don't come home till late at night okay uh, and it sort of kept me from starting more businesses okay. to which I could make her president mm -hmm. and let her run them mm -hmm. but I'm always tinkering uh, somebody that has this uh, entrepreneurship is always looking at things and trying to figure out how to turn them into business. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that during the, even when I was in business, I volunteered and did a lot of uh, civic work for mm -hmm. about 25 years. That's and, wonderful. Uh, yes. at, you know, while I'm balancing, you know, yeah. your business your career, and your personal yes. career. Yeah. Uh, now that I'm, I'm uh, in public. Yeah, full time in public yeah, office. Yeah, yes, uh, it's the kind of thing that you don't do for the money. No, uh, it's you know the, you're not, not doing it because of the pay. You're doing no. it because you're passionate about you're you know commitment. serving yes. the, mm -hmm. the citizens. And I think the other is, is especially for people like me and Mayor Leopard and others who have been successful in the private sector. Yes, uh, we come to the city and. And while the city of Dallas, uh, a lot of people think of government as just some, mm -hmm. you know, amorphous thing. They can't pin their, they can't pin it down. Yeah. Uh, city is really nothing more than a business. No. Uh, in the city of Dallas, we have a th almost a three billion dollar a year budget. Mm -hmm. We have thirteen thousand employees. Uh, it's it's a Quite big sizable. business. sizable. Yes. The the only difference is our mission is to not make money. Our mission is to serve the citizens. Yes. So the ability to take the, the lessons that we've learned from the private sector mm -hmm. and bring them to the public sector to help us be more efficient, mm -hmm. to be more customer service related. Mm -hmm. I will tell you when I came on the council, yes. uh, you know, there were many employees in the city that were not caring about mm -hmm you know, how quickly they answer the phone no. or how they talk to people. Yeah. Now we measure our customer service uh, levels yeah. and they continually improve. Okay, good. And the, the responses we get now, and I, so I think it's a different city of Dallas government today than it was five mm -hmm. or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And which is better because we're, yeah. we're providing more services yes. for less money. Yes. Uh, which means less taxes yes. to the citizens mm. and better services at mm. the same time. So mm. I think it's a good blend to bring the, uh, mm -hmm. the people from the private sector and take all Into that experience yes. who can afford to donate their time, yes. sort of, Make that commitment. And, uh, yes. and do it. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yes, but to some people, Ron, I mean, at least on surface, that you think that being the government and experiences in the private sector are sort of contradictory. Because, like you said, in the private business, yeah, you ask for efficiency, innovation, you know, different ways and approaches of doing different things. But in government, you sort of, you know, I mean, the general notion is that people are set in a certain way, and efficiency, you know, efficiency is not really required for everything that you know you do. I mean, with all due respect to public servants around the world, that, that it seems to me, at, at least on surface, that people would think that, you know, this, you know. Don't go hand in hand. Uh, how do you then translate your experiences and successful ones from the private sector into the public domain? Well, I'll start off. A joke in the United States is if somebody 
would introduce themselves. They yes. would say, Raymond, yes. I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Yes. And people would laugh yes. because the last, thing they, contradictory. Yeah, the last <laughs> thing they expect the government to be doing is here to help them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I said. We have reinvented the way government operates in Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot of awards mm -hmm. for, for stepping out and taking a chance, mm -hmm. which in the private sector would be you know, very risky. Yeah, of course. Uh, and uh, we've proved that we have a good business model to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to balance finances, you have to balance the cost of delivering services, uh, and you have to have revenue sources mm -hmm. for those things. And so I think over the last few years, we have been successfully able to morph Dallas from a government that people would laugh at mm -hmm. when you said, I'm here from the government, I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. Now they, I think, understand that you know, you are here to help them. Mm -hmm. You're here to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. The problems, whether it's somebody who uh, has a street that needs repair mm -hmm. or it's somebody like a business that needs some help in relocation. Yeah. Uh, in the last number of years, we've moved uh, over 30 companies mm -hmm. internationally okay. to Dallas. Dallas. Okay? Okay. And we've moved dozens and dozens and dozens of companies domestically mm -hmm. from big ones like AT&T yes. to little ones that you Nobody yeah, ever hears perfect. about. Yes. But they all add to our tax base and they help make the city better. Mm -hmm. And we've done it uh, by being entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Are we there yet? Does the city operate the way Ron operates? No. No. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I love to say I have a FedEx mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for Federal Express to invent purple delivery. Okay, which is? Purple delivery is I can order it today, yeah. I can have it delivered yesterday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. They haven't, del they haven't <laughs> invented that it yet, yeah, no. but that's my, I mean, and so what we try to do with the city is if somebody calls today, yeah. we want to take care of them today. Mm -hmm. Really what we would like is we would like to have solved the problem before they figured it out that mm -hmm. they had a problem. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the analogy there. Okay. So. But uh, of course. When we look at you know the city of Dallas as well as the city of Taipei or any other place around the globe, in today's world, it's very different than what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. The challenges are different, the problems are different, and also the solutions are different. And how do you then, running a bureaucracy of 13,000 people as a member of the city council, try to come up with innovative ideas that actually work you know, it's actually something that your employees can really implement. It's not just some lofty ideas that you float around and nobody ever hears from it. You know, I mean, how do you do that? Well, it's, it's about communications. Okay. It's about utilization of technology. Yes. It's about setting your goals mm -hmm. and also measuring your progresses. Okay. Because if we set a goal mm -hmm. to fix a pothole in 30 days, okay. and then we find out that we can fix it in 25 days, okay, that Under the old system, yeah. you would leave it at 30. Yeah. Under the new system, we now ratchet it down to 20 and say, can we take the 25 days to 20? Yes. And then you keep working that until mm -hmm. you do, mm -hmm. such as the other day. Okay. Uh, I got an email from a constituent of mine okay. thanking us that she, she had uh, called the city. We have what we call 311 mm -hmm. to make it easy for the, cus for the citizens. Mm -hmm. They don't have to know what department. They dial 311, okay. and the operator then routes the, takes all the information okay. and makes sure that it goes to the right department, okay. tells, the them, problem is tells them when it'll be fixed, okay. how long it's going to take, and if you need it, you can look it up on the web. Okay. So she called in about a pothole, uh -huh. and she went out on an errand, and two hours later on her way home, the pothole was fixed. Oh, terrific. Okay. Yes. She took time out of her day to okay. say she didn't expect that type of service. Not from the from city. The city. No. Okay, so yes. that's the type of things that we try to do. We want to meet, beat their expectations. Okay, that's terrific. And for the, the remainder of the program, Ron, you had a very unique career in terms of starting, you know, in private sector first, and you had a string of successful, you know, businesses, and now you're in government and you're serving your second. You know, second term. Second the, term, getting yeah. ready to be reelected for my third. Okay, good. And then, the, so it's a combination of private businesses and now in public domain in government. How would you tell the viewers back home who are watching our program, especially the younger generations, who might be thinking of doing something similar like what you had in your career development? What would be your recommendations? What would be the steps that you would suggest that they prepare themselves? 
before they undertake such a task? Well, I think the first thing is just to get involved. Okay. And uh, have that commitment. Yeah. Get you know volunteer for something for a okay. civic uh, group. Uh, contact their their uh, local city government okay. uh, and say you know hey I, I would like to volunteer and help you with something okay and uh, you know it's it's one of those things you either you live in this world and you're passionate about it okay and and you're comfortable mm -hmm. and you're excited all at the same time uh -huh. and and if you are you can be successful in it exactly uh, it cannot be the kind of thing you can't you can't be bothered by people you know, criticizing you. Yes. Uh, I think you have to have mostly. I think the that passion about serving. Yes. And yeah. uh, and then the other is, uh, I'm very fortunate in that you know my kids are grown and I don't have to worry about the financial aspects of serving. Exactly. Uh, but you have to be careful that you don't uh, deter from your private life mm -hmm. or your business life because okay. at the end of the day, okay. while volunteering is good. If your private business suffers because yeah. you're volunteering too much, mm -hmm. or you're not going home to see it's your wife or your kids, yes. then you, you got your priorities uh, yeah. mixed up. So yes. uh, I think it's just it, with that comes an element of patience to make sure that you do it at the right time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when you do it, the way I do things, I mean, I roll my sleeves up and it's yeah. two hundred percent. So yes, okay, good. Finally, Ron, are you happy that you did? Oh yeah, I okay. wouldn't. Uh, you couldn't pay me enough money to do this. They don't pay me anything anyway, no. but uh, <laughs> it's the kind of thing, it's, it is, uh, you know, a, as I was growing up, I would have never dreamed that I okay. would find myself in public service, you know, in a government role as a city council member. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's one of the pinnacles of my career. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the program, okay. Ron. And certainly, I think, I, along with a lot of viewers at home, we certainly learned a lot from you today from what you said on the program. I look forward to you know, more beautiful things happening between the cities of Dallas and Taipei. And welcome to Taiwan again. Well, thank you very much, Raymond. I've enjoyed it, and I look forward to being here again. Yes. Thank you for watching our program. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. See you.